At the end of the year 2019, when Darktable 3 came out, a new module appeared. The module is Filmic. At the time, many users didn't really understand how it worked, and it is still the case today. If you want to learn how to use it in a simple manner and understand exactly what this module does, then you're in the right place. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Let's have a look at this photo then of a sunset. Now instead of thinking it, this is a photo, which obviously is, imagine that it is a real scene. Um, so what we are actually seeing is the sun. Um, and let's look at the today at the luminosity. So in the scene, this part of the scene is what I'd call the bright, the brightest parts, and maybe some dark tones here are in the in the scene are there. Um, this amount of light can be put on a scale from zero or nearly zero. Um, if it's physically possible to get to zero um, brightness to um, something where it would be infinity um, is at least un unbounded um, on this scale bright would go let's say somewhere around here and dark what I call dark on this scene would be imagine um, somewhere here so I have the what we call the dynamic range of the scene which is here this is the dynamic range of the scene so the scene is I can represent the scene there um, then uh, we have a camera so the camera um, has a limited dynamic range and let's say the camera which we will represent by a little box that can capture different amounts of light ranging from its darkest to the brightest and the dynamic range of the camera let's say 12 13 14 EV is the, the number of stops between the darkest and the white the, the brightest point so if I have a look relative to this scene and if I do the exposure let's say like this the exposure by the way in a scene is is what is just moving the amount of light I'm letting in so I'm actually just moving this uh, the sensor well not the sensor I'm moving the, uh, the the whole camera setup relative to the light in the scene that is set in exposure let's say I set it like that so I, I'm going to have some clipping in the highlights here because there are some parts of the scene some parts in the middle there maybe that um, have completely saturated the uh, the sensor there's after a point when there's too much light that enters one of the photo sites on the sensor it saturates that just registers full anything else that comes in is not recorded and I may have lost some here which means I didn't get enough information uh, from certain parts of the scene to register anything in uh, on the camera sensor um, okay so now we have set up, this is the camera. Uh, now let's go home and put this into some software. Now there are two families, two different kinds of software, and there are two workflows. Let's look at both of them. The most common one is what we call display referred. Display referred means that what I have captured in the camera will be uh, no it's not cut that sorry let's copy oh I can actually paste it here okay let's put one there and one there for later so the um, the information I have got from the sensor will be put into a workspace so this is a, a color space which is actually um, bounded in brightness here 100 percent and this in reality does not exist so uh, 0 to 100 and the information let's say is copied somewhere here I don't know where it is there we are if the scene 
um, that I've captured is um, has less dynamic range than my uh, screen then it will be somewhere in the middle and then um, so here I have my image now I have an image, a computer image in a color workspace that I can work with with some software and if I want to change exposure on the software then what am I doing? I'm just sliding this image up and down um, relative, well, closer to the zero or closer to the hundred. Now what happens if I slide too far to the right and this image, the same image, I'm just copying the same one, my image goes here and what happens? I go more than 100% and that means that I will clip some pixels on the screen and those will turn usually get a red highlight warning when I do that and if I go the other way and go beyond here beyond the zero um, I'll just crash into the wall everything underneath will get stuck at zero and I'll have an underexposure warning and that is what actually happens if I can show you this scene here so I mean capture one here it's reset as it was when I opened the photo um, so it seems that the dynamic range that I had on the camera is greater or at least has been translated into the workspace as something that's greater than I can see than what I can see because I have some underexposed and some overexposed pixels what I'd like to show you is this if I um, make the exposure brighter I am actually clipping more and more so I'm losing information here and if I leave that there then uh, that is lost and if I go down here I'm going into the brick wall on the left and I'm losing more and more pixels now this is a workspace these, 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 this software is still very good it's not a criticism but that's just how it works um, I can actually get some of that back by moving other sliders um, but basically um, I do lose I, d I am limited, it is bounded in, um, in brightness so let's get back to the notepad and see what happens when I have a scene referred workflow the same information is uh, in the camera this time though the um, information will be transformed into data which is um, in a color space which is unbounded in luminosity um, so it is bounded in its colors but not in luminosity um, so what happens there is I get the information which is copied so I have the same idea I have the image which is there that's the image if I want to increase the exposure then it, it goes to the right lower the exposure it will go to the left and I can do all sorts of transformations um, on the image the only thing what we're interested today in is what happens how does filmic work that's the idea well what is filmic for filmic is actually there to help me see the image because in the display referred workflow that is the first thing that's done it is put the information is put into the uh, display referred um, color workspace which um, is what I can see the scene referred workspace is not something that is directly visible so there's an extra step that has to be done and here I'm going to have let's say a screen which will be here the screen which has zero so the darkest pixel it can show and the brightest pixel it can show now somehow I have to get this image onto the screen so how does that work well in reality when I'm in a scene referred workflow there is no such thing as um, a true black or a true white it's all relative um, to what I see what we're doing when we change the exposure of a photo is really what we're doing is we're choosing a middle grey 
we're kind of setting the image somewhere in the luminosity uh, scope and that is um, let's say we chose to have it there we haven't, haven't moved the exposure let's say that the gray point is there this gray point will then be mapped by filmic to the gray point on the display which is actually 18 percent gray but perceptually I see this as kind of 50 percent luminosity so this is mapped there then there's a certain amount of lumen the, the the image of the luminosity of the, of the image that are copied straight one to one down to the screen which means that the relative luminosity to the gray point on the image is the same relative luminosity to the 18% uh, on the screen and this is this zone here is what is uh, called the latitude this is latitude then we have a problem we have some bright areas of the picture and maybe um, or maybe I didn't do this screen very well I'm going to kind of uh, I'm going to make the screen a bit less a bit smaller just for the example let's say the hundred percent is there um, so I have quite a lot of of uh, the image here luminosity is left on the image but I have let's say very little space left on the screen um, well, what how what filmic does is it will um, with the white point I chose I haven't ch talked about that what is choosing a white point I, uh, I need to choose a white point somewhere so I need to tell um, I need to tell Darktable what I consider as being white um, so the brightest point uh, usually what we'll try and do is match up the brightest point of the image and try and make sure that uh, that is the brightest point on uh, on the screen but maybe in maybe in the black so that be the white point I don't have to this is absolute choice if um, let's say I take a point which is further on the line as being white then um, the brightest point of the image will be mapped a bit lower and it won't be exactly white um, if I choose a black point let's say which is here I'll choose that one a bit lower this black point is mapped there and therefore what will filmic do it will try and compress all that zone into what is left so I've actually defined that this is the zone up to the latitude that I want to map down to this amount of space at the bottom to map that to that so it's not um, it's not one-to-one -one mapping um, if you look at the graph once you've, once you've understood that you you've understood the whole lot so what happens is that in filmic we've chosen a black point the black point let's say is at uh, minus 12 EV minus 12 EV means 12 lesser than the gray point and this one maybe a plus 6 EV which is 6 above the gray point so we'll have minus 12 EV here and 6 EV there plus 6 the gray point is 0 that's the reference point um, the grey point on the image will be an orange dot which corresponds so it's above the zero and that corresponds to 18% on the screen and the screen will go from zero to 100% the latitude so this is copied directly um, what I have uh, here is copied directly um, so the 18% there goes there 
then the zones in the latitude go from um, on either side of the 18 then I have something let's say that's 3 EV lower so it might be 3 EV lower and the other one might be 2 EV higher and this is copied one to one so it's a straight line absolutely straight then what happens is that we have quite a lot of dynamic range left horizontally and very little space vertical on the screen to put it in so what does filmic do or filmic makes a curve that actually links up a bit better than that it would link up to zero and then i have quite a lot left on the y points here above the latitude point very little place to put it which is not quite what i had there let's say that's straight very little place to put it so if i put it a different color that point is straight and here i have a short curve and here i have a long curve which correspond to what filmic is doing to kind of force all the dynamic range that i've chosen um, that i think corresponds to the image into what the screen does um, let's just have a look at a couple of examples in a uh, dark table so here we have the uh, the sunset so um, we're going to filmic um, I've set the white point at plus three the dark point the relative black exposure at minus 14 so it goes from minus 14 to plus three the gray point and the latitude all these dark parts are going up straight and then I have some compression the highlights are being compressed um, 200 percent and I have a lot of dark areas which are being compressed as well if I choose a picture which has very little dynamic range if I can get it no yes then I have an image that has very little dynamic range the white point is 2 EV above grey black uh, is minus 4 below the grey point so I actually have um, a zone that's being copied in the latitude and then quite a lot of expansion here and a little bit of compression in the highlights and that's it um, filmic does it all on its own um, I only work with this and that is the curve I was saying the latitude zero orange point 18 percent in the latitude then it's straight and then below the latitude I get a curve to fit in the dark parts and a curve to fit in the white parts and once that is set up with a nice curve without any errors oh how can I get errors there I have a curve that's going underneath zero there you don't want that the thing to be careful about is that this curve stays white all the time so between zero and 100 and we're not trying to do minus negative percentages on the display that don't correspond to any reality at all um, and just the last thing to show you what happens when I move exposure around on this scene that I did um, previously in capture one um, I have the highlight warnings here that are on. If I remove filmic, there we can see we're over exposed. Filmic makes sure that everything is correctly exposed. And if I try and move up the exposure, everything is getting bright. But there's no overexposure warnings and no underexposure warnings when I um, when I lower the exposure, and that is because filmic is doing its job stuffing all the exposure um, into the screen and if you look here at the if you get this in in your mind's eye try and remember what that looks like and i'll put the exposure correctly more or less let's do it like there have a look again and that hasn't changed one little bit because that's not its job it's all relative to the exposure I chose, which is zero. So it doesn't matter what you put on the exposure. It will always be zero here. So the two modules are absolutely completely independent. And there we are. That's how Filmic works.